hello everyone. Um, I'm I'm a bit stunned to be standing up here because what I did when I heard that I'd been nominated in the first place for this award was to go online and look at the previous recipients of it, and I could see that in company like that I had no place. And uh, when I saw the other shortlistees, I was absolutely sure that I wouldn't be the person up here having to <laughs> give the speech. So I've taken immoderately of the champagne and, and the wine and, and the very fine whiskey. And um, uh, all, all I can do is fall back on Robert Burns, who I'm sure would never have been stopped in his speech by uh, a pint of wine and <laughs> have to try and string some words together. I am helped by what passes in, in surgical circles for a classical education, which is that I'm a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons. And the requirement for passing the exam isn't to be particularly skillful with the knife or even intelligent. Surgeons are not known for their intelligence, but rather <laughs> to be able to talk. The examiner will stroke his chin and say, well, my boy, tell me about tumors of the inner ear. It's invariably something you didn't even know existed <laughs> until the question was posed. And you have to be able to speak confidently and fluently and articulately about the subject. Um, and apparently look like you're in command of the situation and that you could be relied on to do any surgery at all that tumors of the inner ear might need. It's, it's an interesting skill to acquire. It's not much good in the, in the arena of, of doing war surgery, which is, which is a very crude business, and it's one that uh, is often has unhappy outcomes because when you're dealing with very badly hurt people uh, with limited resources, things don't necessarily work out as, well, as one would wish. Um, and also, it's a, it's, a, it's a rather poor arena for lofty thoughts. Um, when you're working very hard and you're very tired and you have the particular intimacy, which I wouldn't wish on other people, of being elbow deep inside somebody's abdomen. But um, there is something that you realize in those places, and it's that surgery isn't a very good way of bringing help to people. I believe that water engineers and people who bring in food and, and that sort of aid do a far better job and make a much greater dis difference. And... Um, in a situation like that, you're, you're, you're kind of stuck. You have to find a way of, of justifying what you're doing and feeling that if the best intentions at making a difference starts one individual uh, after another. Um, the real people I do, though, have respect for are those aid workers who bring in water and food and make a vast difference and really save huge numbers of lives. And they're, they're categorized by an extraordinary optimism, an infinite hope, a, a, a love for humanity that I'm not sure that I really uh, qualify for. I'm not that virtuous. I, I, I'm often tired. I'm often short-tempered. Um, and I'm not always sure that I make as big a difference as, as, as I'd like to. But um, I'm sure Rabbi Burns wouldn't mind me quoting another poet uh, under these circumstances. And that would be Wilfred Owen, um, who who wrote about war and suffering, and he, he talked about um, the experience of, of, of trying to help, of trying to ameliorate suffering. And he, he, there's a line from a poem of his which says, and when much blood had clogged their chariot wheels, we would go forth and wash them from sweet wells with truths that lie too deep for taint. And there's, there's lots of stuff that goes on in the humanitarian world, and al although a lot of it has very fine intentions behind it, it gets mired down in politics, and one ends up intervening and trying to patch up the consequences of government's greed, politicians' desire for a legacy. Um, but it is important that one should hang on to the idea that there are truths that lie too deep for taint, and that there is work that one does that, that does make a difference. As I said, I don't really feel that I'm the person to take any, any credit for, that, for this. I think the people that I've worked with, the people who've inspired me, the, the completely selfless people with their extraordinary generosity of spirit and the, and the, the love of, of their fellow humans, which exceeds my frequent grumpiness by a long way, um, those are the people who, who really should be receiving this award. And all I can really do is accept it on their behalf. And I, I thank you very much indeed.